Hello everyone, my name is Ian Neal and I'm a PhD student from the University of Michigan. And in today's talk, I'm going to talk about our analysis of metadata structures in persistent memory file systems. So at last, Intel has made persistent memory commercially available. This durable storage device is one of the fastest commercially available storage devices to date, and is 30 to 40 times faster than commodity solid state block devices. This new byte addressable storage device is a boon for file system developers, as it provides extremely fast data persistence. However, there's still room for improvement, as I.O. performance of modern persistent memory file systems is not able to keep up with the raw bandwidth of persistent memory. In trying to discover what else we can do to optimize these file systems, we notice that there has not been any rigorous analysis of all the components that contribute to the overhead of the I.O. path. We believe that this is an overlooked source of performance issues in persistent memory file systems. Let's consider an example. In this example, an application is trying to update a file. In the file system, a file write at a byte offset is translated to a write at a logical block offset. A logical block is an offset in a file measured in blocks instead of bytes, where a block is the granularity at which the file system allocates space to a file, in most cases 4 kilobytes. To find out where on the device the logical block of the file corresponds to, the file system performs the file mapping operation, which uses a file mapping structure to store existing file mappings and to interact with the block allocator which is used to allocate new space to a file and deallocate space when a file is truncated. In this example, the file mapping structure, which is stored on an SSD, is fetched from the device and cached in a DRAM cache, known as a page cache, where it is then consulted to determine the corresponding physical block of this file. The file mapping structure then locates the device offset and uses this offset to write the data from the application to the device. Before persistent memory, the access and update performance of the physical device were extremely slow relative to the overhead of the file system software, and so it was fine to have complex software stacks and caching layers within the file system, because all of these operations were fast relative to the slow storage device. Nowadays, we have persistent memory, which can be orders of magnitude faster than block storage devices. This exposes the software overhead of the file system storage stack, as other file system operations now appear much slower relative to the read and write latencies of persistent memory. It is clear that these parts of the file system must be tailored to accommodate the unique properties of persistent memory. And indeed, many of these components have been analyzed and optimized in prior research on persistent memory file systems. For example, rather than caching file data in a DRAM page cache, many persistent memory file systems write file data directly to persistent memory using memory store instructions. Other work in optimizing persistent memory file systems has been on reducing the system call overhead by running parts of the file system in user space. However, we discovered that one component in particular has not been rigorously examined in the context of persistent memory file systems, and that would be the file mapping structures which perform the mapping from logical file offsets to physical device locations. Notably, no existing file systems bypass the page cache for file mapping information, and many existing file systems use legacy block allocator designs for new block allocation. These legacy structures contribute to the overhead of the file mapping operation in persistent memory file systems. This overhead can no longer be ignored, as we found that file mapping operation can comprise up to 70% of the I.O. path in even state-of-the-art persistent memory file systems. This leads to the main contributions of our work. We perform a rigorous analysis of file mapping in persistent memory file systems to determine what design decisions lead to performance bottlenecks on persistent memory optimized systems. We then optimize a few commonly used persistent memory file mapping structures and compare their performance to the current state-of-the-art. These exercises helped us identify further opportunities to leverage the unique properties of persistent memory, which led us to designing a couple of novel persistent memory file mapping structures which have not been examined in prior work. Finally, we optimize all of our structures and evaluate them on real application workloads to determine if optimizing persistent memory file mapping structures has real impact on application workloads. I will first discuss how we analyze file mapping structures. We rigorously examine many factors of file system workloads to see how file mapping structures perform under a variety of scenarios. For example, we analyze the impact that fragmentation has on the performance of file mapping structures and how file mapping structures perform under a variety of workload characteristics and access patterns. However, in this talk, I will only discuss two of these questions for the sake of time, which are whether or not file mapping structures should be cached in the page cache and whether or not file mapping optimizations have a noticeable impact on real workloads. We performed our analysis using the Strata file system, which is the state-of-the-art persistent memory file system which is still in use in recent file system research. We use Strata's default mapping structure, which are extent trees which use a page cache as the baseline for our analysis. We also performed this analysis on commercially available Intel Optane DC persistent memory. For our application workloads, we first used YCSB running on LevelDB. YCSB is a common key value store benchmark suite which tests both read and write heavy workloads. And we run YCSB on LevelDB, which is a popular key value store used in the original Strata evaluation. 
We also used the file server and web proxy workloads from the file bench workload simulator in our analysis. We first analyzed whether or not the page cast is necessary for file mapping structures to be efficient because it imposes constraints on what designs we consider. For example, if we need to use a page cache, we end up essentially treating persistent memory as a block device, since the page cache is maintained at a block granularity to make metadata management efficient. However, if we don't need to use a page cache, we can consider structures which leverage the byte addressable nature of persistent memory, so we can explore structures with more random access properties. In this experiment, we compare the throughput of both the Strata page cast extent trees to a version of extent trees which are bypass the page cache and operate directly on persistent memory. And we do this across six different YCSB workloads running on level DB. As we can see, the results clearly indicate that this page cache is detrimental to file mapping performance. For workloads B, C, D, and F, which are bottlenecked on the file system IO path, the page cache extent trees perform worse than extent trees which operate directly on persistent memory. This is because the software overhead of maintaining this cache outweighs the benefits of DRAM caching, since DRAM is only slightly faster than persistent memory itself. Now that we know we can consider file mapping approaches, which don't consider page caching, let's discuss how we optimize file mapping for persistent memory. We will also briefly touch upon the results of the rest of our analysis, as it informs the designs of the new file mapping approaches we ultimately implement. We designed four file mapping approaches optimized for persistent memory. These represent a range of design points which we use to empirically determine what factors are most important to ensure good performance for file system workloads. We first optimized two legacy mapping structures for persistent memory. This includes the extent trees from our page caching workload, which are used in Strata in ext 4 DAX, as well as Radix trees, which are used as mapping structures for page caches, as well as the volatile mappings in Nova. We optimize these structures by removing their dependence on the page cache and implementing multi-level cursors to optimize for large and sequential I.O. operations. However, these structures per suffered performance degradation for large files and suffered for poor update performance. Based on our analysis of these structures, we also designed two new file mapping approaches. These include a hash table approach based on cuckoo hashing and a hash table approach which also includes block allocator optimizations, which we call HashFS. For the sake of time, we will just describe HashFS as it is our overall best performing file mapping scheme and defer detailed explanations of the other designs to our paper. HashFS at its core is a hash table which maps file mappings using linear probing. For example, if I want to look up a mapping for file number one's logical block 21, HashFS first computes a single hash and then uses this hash to index into the table. Since HashFS uses linear probing, conflicts are stored within the same table, and so then we search through the conflict chains by searching subsequent entries until we find the entry which matches the original logical block. We then compute the offset of the file data block. In HashFS, rather than consult a block allocator, we instead make the file block a function of the hash table index which stores the mapping. We're able to design HashFS since we know page caching is inefficient, and so we can perform sparse random accesses directly to persistent memory instead of batching updates in a page cache. HashFS also presents a combined block allocation and file mapping scheme. Insertions and deletions in the hash table implicitly allocate and deallocate file data blocks. This makes allocating new blocks as easy as inserting an entry into the hash table which is more efficient and scalable than traditional block allocation schemes, which must consult separate bitmap structures and usually require acquiring expensive locks. In HashFS, we provide this exclusion using atomic memory primitives. HashFS, being a hash table structure, posed a design challenge in that resizing the hash table would be quite expensive. We wanted to avoid this operation since it would increase the average latency for update operations. We therefore eliminated the need to resize by making HashFS map all file mappings and statically allocating the hash table at file system creation time. By doing this, we can pre-compute the maximum size of the hash table that it would ever need to be and pre-allocate this space for HashFS. We also implement a parallel lookup and insertion operation using SIMD instructions. We implement this operation because many file system workloads perform multiple blocks of I.O. lookup at a time. Performing these operations sequentially would cause HashFS to be slow relative to tree structures, which can perform level traversals to quickly find sequential mappings. We therefore perform hash lookups in parallel to provide similar performance for larger I.O. sizes. Finally, let's discuss the overall impact of our file mapping approaches have when we compared to the state of the art. We compared the end-to-end -end application throughput of YCSB on all six workloads for our four file mapping approaches we build against the strata baseline. We see that our file mapping approaches, and notably HashFS, provide better performance, improving the throughput by 10 to 45% over the Strata baseline. Notably, 
persistent memory optimized centuries perform up to 13% worse than other structures. We also compare the throughput of the two file bench workloads for the four file mapping approaches we build against the strata baseline. Our file bench workloads show a queer lint for Hasselbesch, even over other mapping structures we build. File server, which is particularly write heavy, demonstrates the benefits of HashFS's optimized block allocation and deallocation scheme. The web proxy workload is not bounded on Strata's IO path, and therefore all structures perform similarly. In conclusion, it is important to analyze file mapping specifically in the context of persistent memory file systems, as prior assumptions about file mapping designs no longer apply to persistent memory optimized file systems, such as the need to cache file mappings in the page cache. Our analysis yielded insights about the performance of file mapping on persistent memory file systems, which we used to design two new file mapping approaches. And we demonstrate real end-to-end -end performance improvements using these approaches. We demonstrate this in particular in HashFS, which is able to outperform the state of the art by up to 45% across a variety of workloads. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this talk, and please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about our work.